Hello, welcome to the first session of this short course exploring willow and tissue art. The first two sessions of the course will introduce you to the basics of working with willow and tissue. And the second two um, sessions are more advanced. In session one, we will be looking at how to uh, join together willow and to uh, fix tissue or other materials onto it and how to develop that into decorative hangings. In the second session, we will look at lanterns and stars. Progressing on to the third session, we will look at curving willow to create forms such as flowers, etc. And then in the final session, we'll look at animals. In each session, after we've covered the basics, you'll be encouraged to explore uh, in a much more creative and individual way um, what you can do with those techniques. Here are some examples. So this one with lots of different colours. This one, mainly oranges and reds. This one with bold, strong colours again and this one very definite um, star shape you've got the basics you can become much more experimental and elaborate um, incorporating other materials so uh, here's one uh, that i've made which incorporates um, foil um, foils um, colored tissue pen piercing uh, and stitch. First joining the willow together I've got several pieces of uh, willow you could equally use um, small sticks these are about 30 centimeters long and there are two easy ways of joining willow together the first is to join it together with um, some sort of wire this is an Oasis binding wire available from florist. It's covered in paper, which makes it nice and soft. Simply garden string would work, or even the tags off of food bags. The other way of joining uh, willow together that's quite easy is using masking tape. Just make sure it's got a good tack, so it's nice and uh, sticky. So starting off with the um, wire. I'm going to cut myself a reasonable length of it using a pair of pliers and if I want to join these two pieces which are crossing over each other the first step is to place my wire underneath and taking both sides lift it up and cross it over and twist okay so i've twisted that now take one end and wind it around a stem and then wind it around the one next to it okay i'm going to do the same with the other end wind it around this stem and then wind it around this one and what that does is help stop it from sliding about so I'm going to wind again until the wire is used up okay and that's a nice strong join here's one that I've been working on earlier where I've got several pieces joined together and I think I'm going to add this one in to finish it off so some more wire Just decide where I want to place it underneath Give it a good twist turn and then start to wrap one two this end wrap around this one 
and then the one next to it. Now this time I've got plenty left at the end so I can just twist those together to finish it off and cut off that excess. Similarly, join this one where I want it to go. Joining crossing pieces with masking tape is very similar to using the wire. So I'm going to take a reasonable length of masking tape. I'm going to place it underneath. Lift up both ends and cross them over each other and then take one end and start to wrap it around one of the pieces of willow, wrapping it as tight as I can. Take the other end and make sure that you wrap it around the other piece of willow. So that makes a nice join. So in both cases, you're trying to make sure either the wire or the tape is wrapped around both pieces of willow. Let's do another one just to reinforce that. So a piece of tape goes underneath. I lift up and fold over and then I make sure that I wrap around all the way around one piece of willow wrapped around that one so now I'll take this piece and wrap it around the other one so both pieces have got tape wrapped around that makes for a nice strong joint that won't slide about and here's one that I did earlier. Doing an abstract piece of work like this is um, a good place to start learning about working with willow and tissue, uh, in particular learning how to join pieces which are crossing over. Um, however, you might want to um, try something which is a bit more of a definite regular shape. In which case, a good place to start is to look at making a star. One method of doing a star, which is very straightforward, is to get two triangles. So there's one triangle, and this will be my second triangle, creating that star shape. What I hope you'll notice is that we have to, in this case, join ends rather than pieces which cross over each other. So let me show you how to go about doing that. So, masking tape is much easier than wire to do this. I'm going to get a nice length of masking tape. And I'm going to, first of all, wind it around one of the ends. Notice I put it on at a bit of an angle. So when I wind it, it twists forwards along the length of the willow. I then place my second piece where it's going to go and fold this over. I then lift it up and I try to get the tissue to go under and back around so that it's wrapped around both pieces of willow and it goes across in a triangle over the joint that makes it nice and firm to show you that again so with some tissue uh, masking tape sorry place it on at a slight angle so that it twists forwards, place the 
second piece of willow in position fold it over nice and tightly against that piece of willow and try to wrap it under and round so it's nice and tight on both pieces look at putting tissue onto your framework we're going to start with um, wet work tissue this is a lovely strong tissue that you can buy especially for making lanterns um, it is actually surprisingly similar to what you get in shoe boxes as well but the first technique i'm going to show you for sticking tissue on um, works equally well with ordinary tissue so the first thing i need to do is decide where i want to put the tissue and draw out that shape on my tissue try not to waste too much so i want it to be slightly bigger than the shape i'm drawing it in a felt tip so you can see it nice and clearly but i would recommend that you draw it with pencil and then keeping it tight nice clean snips trying to keep it um, nice and big so I try not to cut inside the line okay move that out of the way and this was going to go just there i would recommend that you do double check that you know exactly where it's going to go and in order to stop things sticking um, to newspaper or tabletop i've got a piece of acetate any piece of plastic will do um, to go underneath whilst i'm gluing i've got pva glue here strong pva and I am going to apply it neat to the frame. Then check that I've got this the right way around. It's very easy to get it the wrong way around. Apply and go back over with more glue over the top carefully gluing this down preferably you will have a little bit of an overlap to wrap it around slightly around the willow itself and that is simple as that to join um, tissue to it um, however you may just notice that that's just a little bit crinkly texture of the tissue if you want to make uh, this really nice and taut um, then nice and tight on the frame then we use a slightly different technique so again i just need to measure out i think i'm going to just do I'm going to do a section here. Move that in so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to do a section just here. You'll notice that actually I'm thinking of the section which is coming out beyond the framework a little bit. So carefully cut that out shape out it's going to go there i'm just checking it is big enough yes so again i'm going to put pv glue don't be stingy with the glue lots and lots of glue best to put too much on rather than not enough and then i'm going to put glue onto the tissue itself i'm just going to add a little bit of water to my glue 
but it's slightly more watery but I dip my brush in some water and in the glue as well and then spreading it all the way through now you can't do this with ordinary tissue it would tear but wet work tissue is a lot stronger so I can lift that up whoops dropping it there lift that up carry it over to my frame and apply it a little bit trickier because it's sticky so just tre tweaking that on I get that in the right position it gluing that on and when that dries it will shrink so adding the water down glue has made it stretch slightly it will shrink and it will be lovely and tight design wise think about filling in some of the holes rather than others um, however you don't have to um, use wet work tissue. As I said earlier, you can use um, ordinary tissue. Just only put glue on the frame. Don't put it through the tissue, otherwise it will fall to pieces. And there are other things you could consider using. For example, you could use transparent fabrics. Um, this is voile. You could stitch that on to your frame. Um, this another type of voile or reflective materials this is foil from um tea bag so you could add other materials onto this frame to to make it shine to make it transparent to make it um just bright and lovely so I'm going to carry on and add a few more bits to this, dry it off and then look at adding colour to it. I have some more tissue to my framework and now it's time to, uh, to decorate it. Um, one thing to mention straight away is that I can stick um, other pieces of colour tissue on top of it. Um, very straightforward. If I apply the glue directly to this surface and then I can apply the tissue. If you were to put the glue onto the tissue you would find it would probably tear. So it's a lot easier to put the glue on to the wet work tissue and then apply and once I've got these three on top of that glue I'll gently go over with a little bit more glue but very gently because um, ordinary tissue does tear very very easily so it's quite easy to apply um, other color tissue or things like tin foil um, or bits of fabric to sections to create a little bit of colour. Um, what's really nice though is to apply um, transparent colours such as watercolours, inks or in my case something called um, amelinkis that you may have come across um, and you get some really nice effects letting them blend and run which is what I'm going to show you next using strong watercolors to add some color and the first thing I'm going to do is wet the tissue and this is where wet work tissue comes in very handy because it doesn't tear I wet the tissue I'm going to put a color in there one side and then I'm going to put another colour over here and just let them just tilt them let them run into each other 
and blend. I want to encourage it a little bit more colour on there. Just encouraging them to run and blend into each other. And the colour just flows lovely through the tissue. I might add a little bit of extra darkness just here. Just let that colour run. If you get a little bit too much running, you can always blot it slightly, which is what I'm going to do. I'll take the corner of a piece of tissue and just soak up a little bit of extra bits where it's running too much. Okay, so just let those run one colour into another. Alternatively, you can wet just very specific areas. So I'm going to wet some lines on here. And then I'm going to put the colour on the line and what will happen is it will follow that line. Allow that to run along those lines. Encourage it with my brush a little bit. Try a bit more colour in there. And it's just going along the wet areas. Finally, I can do a very deliberate blend of colours, so I think I'll do that in this one. I'm going to put some red over the whole thing, a bit deeper on that end, and then again, it's a wet in wet technique. Put another colour, just blend it straight through, so I get a lovely sort of blend. And you can play around with those colours um, in lots of different ways. Um, for people who are a little bit more confident, you can try a little bit of spray bleach or things like that on it to add a little bit more um, variation. When these dry, you get these lovely bright colours. And patterns. So now that we've gone through the basics, um, it's over to you to develop something more elaborate and more considered. Um, before we look at my example, I just want to share with you um, a couple of ideas for inspiration. So you could look at um, stained glass windows, or you might look at the work of abstract artists. Mondrian comes to mind straight away, but you might find some more interesting artists. Um, you might look at textile artists. In particular, um, the one here has really inspired me with my design. Here's my final design, a um, photograph of it hanging in, um, in the window. I um, hope you can see that it incorporates a wider range of material, but also is much more considered in terms of balancing um, colours, pattern and shapes. Let me talk you through um, how this developed by showing you a series of pictures. I developed um, my framework. I've used um, the binding wire to hold it together and I've used um, natural willow, non-stripped, so it's got a little bit more texture. Um, we can see these strong uprights where I've tried to use the curves uh, naturally occurring in the willow um, to create a sort of art shape and the way that I've infilled across to break it down into smaller shapes trying to get some sort of balance. After building the framework I then moved on to um, the backgrounds. 
Um, here, wet work tissue, one piece all the way down, um, glue put through it so that it's tight and nicely um, as it's dried, and similarly through here. Notice that I've put the tissue on the back so that the, the, uh, the twigs stay very, very clear and pronounced. And then I've got two other areas. This one's easy to see, um, a, a bluish voil. This one's slightly harder to see. It was four layers of a golden voil. Uh, it does show in the final work as the light comes through it. So the voils were stitched on. Um, quite rough stitching and at the bottom I've tried to fray them a little bit just so that they don't just suddenly everything doesn't end all at once. I then began to look at um, opaque reflective areas so some golden foil, um, some silver foil, the silver foil was from um, a, a, a tea bag, you know, a wrapping for tea bags. My next step was starting to introduce some colour and trying to balance this colour around. So it's separated, but the eye sort of moves in an interesting way around it. And at this point, I began to realise that perhaps everything seeming to stop at this line wasn't really quite working. So I added some extra pieces here, here and here expanding outwards. I also cut through the, um, the red, that, sorry, I should have said that that red was, um, was red tissue. I cut a hole through and then I stuck yellow on the back and I started to pierce with, uh, with pins. I've stuck purple tissue in stripes going in different directions in some of these boxes and also starts to draw back with a fine liner pen um, black into those and again I cut a hole through this one with a sharp knife and then stuck the um, yellow tissue on the back. Having the wet work tissue allows you to do this because it's help, it has that strength that holds it all together. I realized that it wasn't quite balancing. I'll just go back to the previous one. Very, very dark on this side. And something needed to be done about that. So I cut two of those sections out and start to decorate them and also put holes in, um, piercing through extra tin foil um, here and trying to, to keep it busy but with you know lots of interest and nicely sort of balance the color red in particular bouncing around i limited the colors because i find that's a lot easier than trying to do um, loads and loads of colors and then you get lost and that's it that was the development of mine um, what i'm looking forward to is is seeing how yours develops for today um, next session we will be looking at the basics of um, 3d stars and lanterns and i'll be encouraging you to explore further how you can uh, decorate those develop them into into your own pieces of artwork bye, -bye for now